This week on Down the Right Field Line, we're going to recap all the moves that the Marlins made in the winter meetings. We're also going to talk about some moves that came after the winter meetings. So stay tuned, Down the Right Field Line, next. Hey, what's up guys? Uh, thanks for joining us down the right field line. Uh, we're going to do a quick recap of uh, the winter meetings, but before we get to that, I wanted to get to a question that one of our fans posted on our Facebook page. The question comes from Gershon Rabinowitz. Uh, he pretty much talks about the fact that we picked up Reyes and he thinks that's a great move, but he says, can Hanley handle a move to a new position off a down year? What do you think about that, Rafi, and uh, you know this whole Hanley situation going on? Well, this whole Hanley situation, uh, to a degree, is being blown out of proportion. Uh, people love controversy, and Hanley can be kind of a sensitive person, but we don't really know the whole story. Uh, he came out and basically said uh, that uh, he's just looking forward to you know getting along with everybody and getting ready for spring training. And, uh, you know, just doing their stuff and he, he uh, trusts the, the front office and, and their moves. So, you know, ultimately, I think Ozzy's going to put him in his place where he should be and be like, look, this is your team. I, we need you at third base in order for us to move on and succeed. So you're going to do me this favor and you're going to play third base. Like it? I mean, you're getting paid $46 million for the next three years enjoy playing third base so come on like you said Ozzy Guillen has said time and time again Handler Ramirez is the Marlins he is the face of the franchise no matter who we add and some of the other moves we made during the winter meetings we added huge bat and Jose Reyes he's gonna be able to get on base in front of Hanley and in front of Stanton gonna drive he's right. gonna be able to score a lot over a hundred runs we would hope we also added Heath Bell. We finally have a closer, consistent closer. And yep. uh, another move that we made, which kind of came towards the end when the Marlins dropped out of the pool hole sweepstakes, which we're going to talk about in a second. Mark Burley. We got a consistent number two starter, mm -hmm. and he's a lefty, which is really important in the NL East. So, Rafi, exactly. what are your uh, takes on Mark Burley? Burley. In Burley, you have an innings eater. You have a veteran guy who is gonna is gonna just be there consistent, like you said, 200 innings a season. Uh, he's he's gonna be he doesn't strike out very many people, but he puts the ball in play. So these infielders better be ready to to field the uh, ground balls. Um, you're gonna get a guy that in a rotation that hasn't been very certain in the last few years. You're gonna get a certain uh, type of performance from this guy. It's it's a great move, I think, and hopefully we get another one of these guys on the rotation. Yeah, it's uh, four years, fifty-eight million dollars. A lot of people were talking about that we might have overpaid, but it's this is one of those guys that you know we really wanted to be in there to solidify that rotation. And if JJ is a little bit banged up in the beginning of the season, he can easily slot into that ace role. And right. you know, lead our rotation. You know, during C uh, JJ's uh, absence, one of the biggest uh, talks during the winter meetings was Albert Pujols and CJ Wilson. Yeah. Now the Marlins were in the, on the on both of those sweepstakes all the way to the end, but the Angels came out of nowhere and signed both of them. So uh, that was a huge move by them. And they were only going to be spending 15 to 20 million dollars this off season, and out yeah. of nowhere they invested all this. And then a few uh, days later, you hear that 
they just signed, I think it was something over three billion dollar contract with Fox for yeah. the TV rights. So now we know where that money's coming from, and right. you know it's they just took their whole team to a new level. And right now, I think they were ranking them amongst you know the Red Sox and the Yankees. So uh, do you think the Angels are within those uh, teams? You'd like to think so, but. You know, all his off-season expectations. Look at the Red Sox last year. Uh, last time I checked, the Angels don't have a closer. I mean, they have Walden, or whatever his name is. Right. He didn't do very well. So, they need a closer. Um, but, yeah, they do look very powerful, very, uh, you know, they look like they can get the job done in the, in the AL West. And you still have the Rangers out there. So... I mean, you know, it's a wait and see thing, and you have, that's why they play the game. You have to wait and see. I loved watching on Twitter that night when all the rumors were coming in because you see uh, Tory Hunter tweeting about, yeah. you know, Pujols come over here, and then Lomo's tweeting saying, hey, if you come here, there's no uh, income tax. Income tax yeah. So it was like funny watching the players going back and forth trying to convince the great Albert Pujols, but. At the same time, you know, I kind of respect his decision. He said that, you know, he prayed about it. It was a really hard decision. And then the day after he signed with the Angels, he bought a full page in the St. Louis uh, newspaper right. uh, praising the fans and saying that I had a great time here. You know, uh, I'm glad that I played with you guys and everything. And, you know, that's a class act. Albert Pujols yeah. is a class act. And uh, I'm very happy of the way it played out. Now, as far as C.J. Wilson, he's going home. That's where he wanted to go. And I think no matter what the Marlins offered him, he was dead set on going to the Angels. And then once Pujols went there, it was just like, here you Made go. It easier. Yeah, exactly. So in another news uh, about the Marlins, they designated Clay Hensley for assignment. That came as a shock to the both of us. Yeah, uh, definitely. Where... I mean, talk about some of his numbers from last year. I mean, not, it doesn't make sense to me. I mean, I, he was a very consistent eighth inning uh, relief guy. Eighth inning, like uh, the year before last, or uh, he was, he actually had to step in as a closer at towards the end because Leo Nunez couldn't get it done. Uh, but let me read off some numbers out here. As a reliever last year, he had an ERA of 3.51. In 25 and two-thirds innings, allowing batters to a 2.26 batting average and posting a 1.29 whip. It's not bad. That's pretty good. Uh, what messed him up was the starts. Yeah. Uh, as a starter in the, the nine starts, he posted a 6.21 ERA. Uh, whether it was whether it was the starts that that made the decision that factored into the decision. I don't know, but if it was, I don't think that would that was fair. I have a feeling that part of it is the rumors that are circulating that we are going to uh, offer uh, Leo Nunez or Juan Carlos Oviedo uh, arbitration. And if we do offer him arbitration, that, that would pretty much assume that we're slotting him into the eighth inning role. He might be able to do it somewhere else uh, because of the whole change of scenery. But I'm a little bit nervous about being, you know, slotting him into that role, especially after the seasons he's had in the past. Exactly, and uh, you only hope that uh, they're tendering him to trade him. I hope we get somebody from the outside, a, a Joel Zumaya, give him a chance. I know he's been injury riddled throughout his career, but if he could put it together, that'd be great. That'd be a great eighth inning guy. So. Uh, one of the most recent moves was actually on Monday. The Marlins signed Aaron Rowan to a minor league contract. Now, obviously, we have that center field job open. It's assumed that Bonifacio is going to get that. Right. But it's great to have a guy like Aaron Rowan to back him up. Definitely. And, uh, you know, what are your thoughts about Aaron Rowan? Aaron Rowan, I think at this point you're getting him for his defense. You're getting him to, you know, track the ball down in the outfield and just, you know, make those crucial catches in the late innings. Uh, Bonifacio has great speed, and, you know, he'd be great in center field or in the outfield or wherever. But you want that veteran presence in the outfield to know where to go, 
you know, judge the flight of the ball and do different things that a bona fide may not be as experienced in. And it's good to have uh, several options going into spring training. So, you know, let Aaron Rowan go out there. Uh, he's got to work hard to get a spot and uh, see if he can make the team. Other moves that have been going on by some of the other teams, uh, the most recent one being uh, Aramis Ramirez on Monday. Uh, rumors are that he did sign a contract with the Milwaukee Brewers. All will assume that with that sign and Alex Gonzalez signing previously to that, yeah. Prince Fielder is done as a Brewer. So this week's edition of Farrell Foul, Rafi's going to be talking about some of the recent rumors about a Fielder and the Marlins and Oh, you know, a lot of the talk that's been going on with that. So, Rafi, take it away. Within the last few days, uh, since we missed out on Albert Pujols, the logic is, well, why don't you go for a Prince Fielder? You have the money for it. Uh, here's the thing. We were going hard after Pujols in terms of marketing. Last time I checked, Miami caters to the Hispanic community. So, it makes sense to bring Albert Pujols into your ball club and make that huge splash and if it doesn't happen you have Gabby Sanchez the thing that bothers me is this is not a race issue for some reason or another people like to escalate it into a race issue that's not the problem here the problem is that we're going for a specific market and if you want people in the seats you have to cater to your audience and your market and so that's why I have an issue when people are bothered by the fact that we're not going for Prince Fielder. When we have a perfectly good first baseman in Gabby Sanchez, you know, knocking in 20 to 25, knock, you know, 85 to 90 RBI a season. And, you know, to me, we can use that money elsewhere and bring in more people. And it's just, I think Prince Fielder is, you may disagree with me guys, but he's a waste of space in more than one way, more than many ways. And so, you know, have fun this season with Gabby Sanchez at first base, and you'll see how far we go. Let's see. If Prince Fielder signs with anybody else, I don't think they'll make the playoffs, but that's what I think. So that's about all we got for this week of Down the Right Field Line. Remember to tweet us, uh, follow us on Facebook, and email us with any comments you have. And uh, let us know what you guys think of Rafi's comments, and uh, we will see you next week. And for now, our random video of the week, which we like to call the Major Freak Out.